Shogun 2, in my opinion, is going to become another great Total War game that's going to be coming up with some of the most ambitious upcoming overhauls you will ever likely see. You know, it's like Attila in many cases. And what I'm showing you here right now is an amazing collection of upcoming mods that you should keep an eye out for. I think that's the best way you're going to do this. Because it's just amazing what modders have always come up with. They come up with the best of mods. They come up with amazing ideas that these should really be officially £30 DLCs or something. Or maybe a saga, maybe a standalone even. You know? And that leads to the very question. What is a saga? A saga is a game where you have a refined area of history. Something that could have turned the powder keg. But seeing that sagas as they're not doing so well right now compared to Pharaoh, what you're seeing here is the Carlist Wars mod. And this mod is an absolute breathtaker. It's literally set in the Victorian time period of the brutal Spanish Civil War. And there are revolts and rebellions, which are always annoying. Now, I previewed this mod back on my channel a long time ago. But at the very same time, I'm showing you an updated version of what this mod is. And you can definitely see there's been more updates, there's been more unit card changes, and there has been a lot more campaign mechanics added in. There are more dilemmas, to a degree, but the campaign is still, as I will say, a work in progress. It's still amazing what modders can achieve. And yes, you do have to go through insane wait turn times and having to deal with rebellions. Rebellions are absolutely tricky to deal with. But I would say that if you want to get an idea of how rebellions work, you should play Fall of the Samurai first, because that will then teach you the mechanics of how to deal with rebellions. Because rebellions, modernizing, developing, all of it takes time. And this is just the tip of the iceberg of what you're going to see when this mod is fully completed. I just think Mikalis Wars is an absolutely fantastic mod and we are going to be having some great, great campaigns in the future. I'll be looking at live stream minutes at some point because I want to showcase what we're getting here. But you know, you have the Carlists, you have the Liberals, you have the Monarchists, you have a whole bunch of people that are all, one way or the other, fighting for control of the Spanish monarchy. And that's the main thing. Spain is in a threat. Spain is in chaos. And this is a land where the Spaniard himself is the most ambitious, was fighting for his homeland. Or, the fact is, is that Spain doesn't lack any brave soldiers, but the political fighting is always happening somewhere, one way or the other. In its bureaucracy, in its nobility, in something, one way or the other. And the Carlos Wars mod is not just a mod by itself, it's an ambitious overhaul. It's something where you think, okay, wow, these are the factions that I have, this is the great expanse of where I can fight, this is what I can do. There are railways, there's rebellions, and you have to deal with so much. Economic pressures, you also get a ton of gold as well. You just get so much. Diplomacy is alright, diplomacy I wouldn't say is the greatest. It's your normal standard diplomacy that you would normally get. So nothing has been changed so far in terms of that. But you can see that there is an obvious change. Now in terms of custom maps, that's going to take a long time. Because to make custom maps like these, it is going to be a bit tricky, I think. You will need the time and resources to do so. You can play as the French, you can play as the Portuguese, you can play as anybody. That's how good this mod is. And sooner or later, as I've said in my previous video as well, that this campaign map will expand to North Africa, there will be more regions, there will be so much more to do. It was not a pleasant campaign having to lose all of your provinces and revolts. But think of it as if you're playing the Western Roman Empire, right, but in Spain, and you're losing to revolts day in, day out. It's a difficult situation. You've got vast expanses. This is basically as if you were fighting in Qing China, you know? But if you ever wanted to fulfill your fantasies of, let's say, Napoleon's revenge, you could literally do that. Now, I am here playing as the French, and I just wanted to go and attack the Brits. Right? It was a fun experience, to say the least. And of course, if you want to go to war with the mighty French army, I don't think that's really possible to do so. Because even if the French army is a former shadow of itself, 
it still retains many of Napoleon's tactics, many of Napoleon's mechanics. I was playing as a Carlist, right? And saying, okay, the Carlist can maybe win. They cannot. Against superior French cavalry, it is absolutely impossible. I just think, okay, wow, this is what we're getting. And the battles themselves are so atmospheric. It feels like a completely new total war. And this was on a custom map, I believe. But, you know, you have to be very careful where you fight. If you want to fight against Bobo in France, you have to play your cards carefully. You can have Spain's most best troops fighting against the best of the French. It, it just feels like, okay, wow. You can even also reenact Napoleon's invasion of Spain, except this time, okay, you're going to go for much superior ambitions. It feels like a whole new Total War game. And this is a period of total war that is not explored at all. In fact, the Carlist Wars would be an excellent saga game. I don't see why CA hasn't gone to this time period itself. This is the Victorian time period we're talking about. Why not the, uh, let's say, the Crimean War, right? The Carlist Wars itself would be such a nice bridge between Napoleon and Fall of the Samurai. It would be a nice transition because it would basically explore more or less the wars of how Europe transitioned into. You can see it is pure beauty. The models have poured so much effort, so much talent, that it feels like, okay, this is the sequel that should have happened after Napoleon. Exploring the wars and the revolutions that happened beforehand. And of course, Napoleon's army doesn't really look like Napoleon's army anymore, but you can see there are still traces of it here and there. It feels absolutely amazing for the content and value you get in at the same time and watching this it just feels like i'm in a sort of big epic 1960s epic historical film that's how good it feels that's how good this mod is and no i would not recommend that if you play the carlist you suddenly go and play against the french and just declare war on them that's not going to work you know you should unite Spain first, then fight against the French, that is, if you wanted to. And this is, is more or less a saga campaign, one way or the other. And it's a mod that's been developed. There's so much content in this mod. It's like, guys, where, where, where is Creative Assembly? Why aren't you making stuff like this? Why aren't you not making stuff like this, you know? That's a real question. When a Total War mod is providing this much insane value, you have to question yourselves. We do need something more decent than historical. And this counts as historical to me. I do like Pharaoh and all, and all but that's for another subject. But you can see here, this is just amazing. It feels and is like a movie or something. I have no words but to express admiration for this fantastic Carlos Wars mod that is already coming up. It's really, really good. of course this mod the morning sun rise mod that adds korea it adds the ming empire it adds japan and it adds its own unique custom maps and this is being done by the korean modders who are working on this fantastic mod and i just think why did we not even get a fantastic dlc campaign for this for shogun 2 you know if it's one thing that although i love total war i love everything series has made great games in the past but if you guys aren't doing it then modders will step up and they will provide competition on such a scale and they will make it in such a way and they will make content that should be worth paying for if this was a dlc i would pay 30 pounds for this look at the insane value look at the maps look at the amount of factions that you have look at the amount of role-playing campaigns that you can simulate within this mod and you're telling me that uh, Shogun 2 is not a great game. It's a fantastic game. That's Korea for crying out loud. I can play Admiral Yi and defeat the oncoming Japanese navies as much as I want. I can pretty much play a corrupt Korean general and not even bother to defend the northern borders while it's been raided by foreign subjects. I can do pretty much everything. There's custom maps everywhere and this is unique Korean architecture. In fact, there is also a preview of the city capital map of uh, Pyongyang that I think 
is added but i don't know but you can also do naval battles and naval battles with their own unique custom turtle ships if you guys have not read about Amuria, you haven't heard of him check out extra history because this guy single-handedly defeated 300 ships in the korean straits admiral yi was not an admiral he was like a normal you know soldier or something but when the koreans put him in charge of the korean navy he learned on it he became sort of you know like almost self-employed one way or the other he learned how to defeat the japanese and he defeated not just one navy he defeated thousands and thousands of japanese ships this guy fought against such overwhelming odds he was a five-star general he was persecuted by the korean court they hated him while most of the korean court fled and all ran up all the way to the north he was the one that was standing against you know this japanese invasion and the japanese were literally ending their civil war you know they were get, gathering experienced troops and they were sending all these experienced veterans against the koreans the Koreans didn't really stand much of a chance, not until they had Ming help and not until they basically stood up and fought for themselves against this brutal onslaught that the Japanese were doing. You know, Japanese invasion was no pushover. The Koreans and the Ming fought valiantly against the Japanese, and the Koreans and Admiral Yi literally smashed the Japanese Navy. They frustrated Japanese ambitions within Korea itself. If Admiral Yi had not been successful, the Japanese occupation of Korea would have been taken over. It would have been a successful, you know, overthrow. In fact, we would have seen the Sino-Japanese were being initiated way before. And it is to the bravery and resilience of the Korean people that they fought against a Japanese invasion. That they fought against the samurai. That they fought against everything that was thrown at them. This was not an easy time to be either a Korean or Chinese or Japanese or whatever it was. It was not easy. The Japanese were sending some of the most experienced veterans against the Koreans. And the Koreans, not I'm not talking about the Korean people, I'm talking about the Korean court. Those people in charge did nothing to defend their region. They did nothing. It was due to the hard work of hard-working Korean nobles, women, men and children and the Korean population, and Admiral Yi, that fought back and said, no, we're not going to stand for it, we're going to go and fight against the Japanese. You know, that is the true spirit of Korea that you can bring when you are playing this mod. Now, this mod is still currently in development, but it is still getting substantial updates. Their Discord is active, and they are working hard on this mod. Unmod Sin for once said, all sides are the best, that every side is good or bad. But what I am saying is that this was a war of attrition, this was a war of logistics, and had Japanese ambitions been successful, they could have gone to Ming Empire, they could have gone and succeeded, but they didn't, because Admiral Yi was the man that stood against them, and of course the Ming Empire, but Admiral Yi, this was the guy that was fundamental. You want to go and play the Korean turtle ships? Go ahead. You want to go and reenact all of this stuff? Go ahead. This is what the possibility of this mod offers you. It offers you and let's go what you're seeing here right now is perhaps one of the biggest overhauls of any total war game i've seen this is victoria total war except that's not really what it is the title of it is fall of the dragon empire And Fall of the Dragon Empire is entirely set within the scramble for the Far East. It features Korea, you know, the Russian Empire, the Qing, the Japanese, all duking it out, trying to fight for control of this vital region. This is a region of competing interests. This is a region of empires. This is a region of complete and utter chaos. And the Japanese are the expanding power. The Russians are also interested in expanding, of course. And the Koreans are stuck between the Russians and the Japanese. And they still rely on their Qing allies. But to be honest, the Qing are declining. You can see that most of the army hasn't really reformed. And the Russians are wanting more and more land. They want a warm water seaport. And they don't necessarily see the Qing 
or the Koreans as their equals. Because this is the era of racism as well, if you put it one way or the other. And you can just see how amazing it is. Just look at it. It feels like a completely new Total War game. It even has battleships. Freaking battleships. This was done by modders. We never even got that in Fall of the Samurai. We never even got that in Fall of the Samurai. Like proper steam dreadnoughts and so on and so forth. And this is still being made in development. What you're seeing here is just absolutely amazing. And yes, I did try it out. I tried out with the Russians versus the Japanese. The Japanese were winning head on. The Russians were not really... The Russian Navy had... They were, they, they were behaving as if it was Tsushima all over again. Now of course, not everything is properly animated. There's still a huge amount of work to be done. But for what it is, is this not worth it? Is this not how a Total War game should be? Is this not how Total War games should be innovated? This is what we want to see more of. If you want to see more of this development, the link to the Discord will be down below. And you can definitely see this. This looks like a battle, a historical battle. And I'll be sure to make something on this, but this is an absolutely amazing mod. This is seriously an amazing mod. You are going to love it. You're going to love every single aspect of it. And sooner or later, they may release a public version, which I hope they do, and let other people come in and mod as well. Because making these mods take a lot of time. To make it, to do it, it it's not easy. And then they have to pay for different models, for different units, you know. Total War modding is, I would say, difficult, but it can be done. But it can all be done when someone is determined to make it. And these Korean modders made this, by the way. A bunch of Korean modders from Korea made this. Or, in, a, in reality, you call it a country Chosun. But it is absolutely amazing. What they've achieved, what they've done here, is this. And the campaign is, seriously, it is addicting. If you play the campaign, you're going to love it. But it's great. And I hope they release a public version on the Steam Workshop sooner or later. And finally, if you haven't been sleeping at all and you don't need to... And finally, don't sleep on this mod. This is the last Alliance Total War. And I believe this is the only big major mod out there in the recent Total War franchise that focuses especially on the Second Age and what the modder server has done with this absolutely fantastic mod is beyond me. If I had the modding skills maybe I would make something like this but to go out there and to make something that it feels so authentic that feels as if it is Middle Earth revisited and this is the Second Age we're talking about here. This is an age where warfare is constant. This is an age where Numenor is establishing its colonies while the reign of Mordor is starting to rise. You know, this is the prequel of which we never even got. And dare I say, this is even better than perhaps, uh, well, you know what I mean. But it feels and looks great. The technology tree looks defined. The UI looks absolutely fantastic. And I just wanted to have a brief overlook at what the campaign is. The campaign offers you the entire Earth, well, the entire Middle Earth, and it provides a, and it provides a majority of factions within the Second Age. The battles themselves are amazing, although I do wish that at some point, if it was ever possible, to maybe get some custom maps in the future. So I know that making these custom maps do take a long time as well. And that's the thing. The battles themselves are so amazing, you're like, okay, wow. And yes, I was in playing this with the Shogun 2 Blood DLC, but uh, I sometimes found the Blood DLC not to be that, you know, great. And I found that it was just fantastic. It was a great, great experience. The Last Alliance is truly an amazing mod out there. And with custom cities, it will only be better. Think of it this way, right? If you want to see what Dawnless Days is going to be like, this is what Dawnless Days will be like. This is what it will be. If you want a complete Envision campaign, and for those of you on the Dawnless Days side, right, you keep asking the devs, 
When is Dawn of Days coming? I'm like, look here, the second age. Don't you want to play the second age? Seriously. This is a great and fantastic mod. I seriously am beginning to think this is what Dawnless Days is going to be in its completely finished form with custom maps, custom cities, etc. But for what it is, I will still take this mod and say, wow, it's great. And you can fight so many amazing battles. You can play as the dwarves, fight against the elves. And seriously, it is a second aid, so law constraints aren't so much, I would say. You can still change the law, you can still change everything. I would love some custom dwarven maps, but each and every aspect of it looks great. From the custom shield walls to the arrows to the, just look at it. Look at the banners. Look at everything that this mod is showing you right now. I think Shogun 2 fits absolutely this time period. And no, I was not doing that great. I was doing bad. But the second age, it looks really, really amazing. And that's it. All I would say is, is that this mod is really great. And that all of these mods here are upcoming mods you can watch out for Shogun 2. Make sure to check out their Discord. Check out the Last Alliance mod DB. Check out their Discord. You're going to be in for a great, great time. So don't forget to leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe. I will see you on the next. I will see you on the next video.